Hello, and welcome to The Daily Atheist. In this episode of my Evil God Monster of Abraham series, we'll be covering Genesis chapter 2 of the Book of Death, where, with the single word, the Evil God Monster of Abraham fires the first salvo in the religious war on women. Stick around. Okay, before we get too far along, I have to warn you that your soul will be found lacking for some reason probably related to your sexual organs by the amazing Super Chris. If you don't reach out and click that subscribe button, then hit that little notification bell. Don't get smited, my friends. Do it now. Now, on with the show. So, where chapter one is a wide-angle view of creation, chapter two is still zoomed out a bit, but it's a much closer picture, if you will, and it focuses primarily on the creation of paradise and man and woman. So, as I read chapter two of Genesis in the Book of Death, I just want to point out a couple of logical inconsistencies as part of our atheist Bible study endeavors. In chapter 1, it says plants were formed on the third day and man was formed on the sixth day. In chapter 2, it says no plants had formed on the earth, yet God created man, then the plants. Genesis 1, verse 11 through 13 said, Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants, and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. Man, as we all know, was created on the sixth day in chapter 1. But in Genesis 2, verses 5 through 7, it says, Now no shrub had yet appeared on earth, and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. No rain, no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. In the following verses, God creates Eden and the plants, etc. because now he has, according to the previous verses, the things he needs for the plants, water and someone to tend them. It would appear that right from the start, the evil God monster of Abraham can't keep his story straight, something his followers should consider, or I guess continue to ignore. But wait, you say, it's the perfect word of a perfect, loving... Never mind. Moving on to the first domino in the chain that would result in the religious subjugation of women for generations to come. I will sum it all up in a single word. A helper. Verses 20 through 22 says, But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took of the man, one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. See, in God's eyes, she's not an equal. She's a helper, an assistant, a, a servant, a beast of burden, albeit the perfect beast of burden, still a beast of burden. And you have to wonder, should women be a little insulted? I mean, literally, according to the Bible, God and man were looking for a suitable helper for man and went through and named every single animal before finally giving up and just making a woman out of man's rib. Almost as a last ditch effort, it would seem. A little side note here to the Bible's credit, woman is the only creature in this chapter not created from dirt. Just a good point to be made. In verse 18, it says, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him, a helper suitable for him. So we're off to make a helper for man. Verse 19 says, Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all of the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to man to name. Then the end of verse 20 says, But for Adam, no suitable helper was found, which clearly implies that that's what they were doing, looking for Adam's helper. Now, I get it that in a way it's a compliment in that no animal, aside from woman, was good enough to be the helper of man. But wouldn't you think God would have known that to start? He could have made it to where man and woman together named the animals. This kind of makes it sound as if God and Adam just stumbled through all the various types of animals, seemingly taking a long, hard, lustful look at goats and sheep while searching for that perfect helper we now call woman. But by having man be created first and giving man dominion over the animals, you've already set him up to dominate over women. Then to create woman and literally, biblically deem her a helper, you are sanctifying in the word of God that women are lesser and are to be controlled and dominated by men. How many women have suffered because of this? In all fundamental sects of any of these religions, the women are always lesser than men, servants to the men in one fashion or another. 
and all of them are forced into modesty, from headscarves to full-blown burkas and the habits of nuns. Even in their modern forms, few of these religions allow anything coming close to equality between men and women. And when they do, when pressed on the subject, they'll still admit in one way or another that the wife is the helper to the husband and subject to his, his will or domain. All because of a word. He could have said equal and created her sooner, but he said help her, and created her last. And those, biblically speaking, were the first steps to the subjugation and oppression of woman by the men of the Abrahamic religions. The misogyny of a few ancient desert dwellers scribbled onto some scrolls sentenced untold millions of women to something akin to slavery. Exactly what you'd expect to find in the Book of Death, written by an evil god monster. I'd like to point out that, to her credit, woman is not present when man is told not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Of course, we all know she catches most of the blame later, but she's not there when God tells man. Point of fact. Maybe men should have been the ones having periods and dropping babies. Chapter 2 of Genesis. Another piece of damning evidence I put forth to justify calling it the evil god monster of Abraham, and for calling the Bible the book of death. Stay tuned for the next episode, where we cover Genesis chapter 3 in the book of death wherein the aforementioned small-minded misogynistic men of the ancient Middle East continued their barrage and sealed the fate of countless women across the millennia. Again, wrapped in a single word, Eve. Before you go, remember to click that subscribe button, hit that little notification bell. Don't disappoint the amazing Super Chris, lest you be smited, and we wouldn't want that. That would be unfortunate. Thank you and take care.